Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to Review of Injustice for All, the first studio record by the thrash metal band Metallica. Today we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of the record, so I decided to go back and see if it still holds up or not. My story with this band is quite simple. My parents and my siblings were always massive fans of this band, so when I was born, they would play me their music all the time. I remember that when I was 3 or 4 years old, they would make me watch that Symphony and Metallica DVD all the time, and I loved it. I've already talked about Kill Em All, Reload and Saint Anger on this channel, so go check those reviews out. When it comes to Injustice for All, we have lots of things to talk about, so let's start with the lineup. We've got James Hetfield on the vocals and rhythm guitar, Kirk Hammett on the lead guitar, Jason Newstead on the bass, is replacing Cliff Burton, who sadly died in a bus accident. Many people already know this story, so Metallica got in a bus crash and sadly Cliff didn't make it. Rest in peace. And finally we have Lars on the drums. The production was handled by Fleming, Lars and James and it's tight, it's clean but heavy, no loudness or no clipping, just the way I like it. But I will never understand why they've decided to make the bass inaudible, like you can't hear the bass like at all. Shouldn't you make the bass stand out more to honor your fallen band member? I just don't get it. Message is diverse, the songs are about various topics ranging from nuclear warfare to injustice, corruption, war, paranoia, abuse, politics, etc. I urge you to read the lyrics by yourself because they are fucking great. Structure of the tracks is advanced, it usually goes like this, intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, guitar solos, another change, chorus, outro. Sometimes it's slightly different. And when it comes to the music on this record, it's thrash metal mixed with some progressive metal elements. The album starts with Blackened and the first thing you're going to notice about it is the guitar work. To me it's just phenomenal. I love almost every guitar riff on this record. Especially the guitar solos are so memorable and melodic. The guitars are fast, thrashy and groovy at the same time. What I'm trying to say is these songs are popular for a reason. Very catchy stuff but also technical at the same time. Then we have the bass work and the bass on this record is just like God. It doesn't exist. I mean it's because of Lars apparently. He decided to turn down the bass, we don't know why. We know that Jason played the bass on this record and you can easily find on YouTube versions of the songs that have the bass louder. Next is the drum work by Lars and I must say that it's pretty good. Back then Lars was a machine, I loved his double bass work, the groove, the speed, the intensity of his playing, everything is on point. Last but not least we have James's vocals and I just love them, the singing, the yelling, just everything. Vocals are basically flawless because there isn't a line here that I wouldn't enjoy. So going back to Blackhand, the intro in this song is one of my favorite things in music, just beautiful guitar work. I just love the emotions it brings out in me. Then you have that classic guitar riff, <laughs> which uh, Jason wrote. This is apparently his only contribution on this record, which is kinda sad. Then you have the verses which are killer, the chorus is even better. That part before the guitar solo where both of the guitarists are playing together, it reminds me of Iron Maiden and I love that part. The guitar solo also slaps. This song is a masterpiece, 11 out of 10. And Justice for All has also a beautiful intro. Then we have that main guitar riff which is just legendary to me. It's so fun to listen to. Every time it shows up in the song I have a smile on my face. And also the pre-chorus and chorus in this song is just beautiful. Justice is lost, justice is raped, justice is gone, I just love that part. And the middle part of the song is also fun to listen to. This is a classic track, it's not on the same level as Blackened to me, but I still think that every second of it is amazing. 10 out of 10. Eye of the Beholder has great drumming and vocals. The guitar riffs also fun to listen to, especially the guitar solos and the middle part of the song. The intro, well, it could have been better. It's a fun track, 9 out of 10. One is my all-time favorite song by Metallica, 
I've always loved it, even when I was a kid, like 3 or 4 years old, I would always listen to it. And I love the acoustic guitar riffs, those guitar melodies, just everything. But the middle part of the song, with that double bass work by Lars. Everyone knows this because it slaps. I especially enjoy how the song is like split into two parts. The first one is emotional and melodic. And the second part is like thrashy and straight to your face. Love that shit. 12 out of 10. The shortest straw. Now this might be controversial, but this is the weakest song on the record. I still enjoy it a lot, but the main guitar riff, well, it doesn't do anything to me. Like, it's there. I tolerate it. The chorus and the solos on the other hand are fucking great. Same with the vocals. 8 out of 10. Harvester of Sorrow has great main guitar riff. It's so atmospheric and dark. Just everything slaps in this song. From the drumming, to the guitar work, to the vocals. The bass? Well, the bass doesn't exist. 10 out of 10. The Freight Ends of Sanity, or however you pronounce it. Now this is my second least favorite song on this record. I still enjoy its atmosphere, the guitar riffs, the drumming, the vocals especially, and the guitar solos. 9 out of 10. To Live is to Die is almost an instrumental piece dedicated to Cliff. It contains melodies he wrote, same as the lyrics. And I must say that this song was written by the bassist, and the bassist wrote the melody, yet you cannot hear the bass on this song. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, there should be bass in this track. The bassist died, what are you doing? So, the bass stuff aside, this song is a masterpiece. I love the intro, it's just so emotional and beautiful. Then we have the guitar riffs, which are very fun. They have that thrashy and groovy style to them. We also have a more calm and somber part in the middle, which I'm all for it. This track is a banger. I just don't understand why we can't hear the bass on a song written by the bassist. 10 out of 10. Dyer's Eve. I am not going to lie to you. This is my favorite song on this record, period. The guitar riffs, the drumming, the vocals, just everything, even the lyrics, slap. This is a goddamn masterpiece. The guitar solos that... Every single guitar riff is so fun to listen to. I have heard this song thousands of times and it never gets boring. It's a classic. 12 out of 10. To sum it all up, the consistency is stable and the flow is fitting, replayability. Yeah, it's a masterpiece. I love this record from beginning to the end. It's a classic for a reason. The highlights here are Dyer's Eve, One, Blackened, and Justice for All, Harvester of Sorrow, and To Live is To Die. What can I say? Everyone knows this record. It's my favorite after Saint Anger and Master of Puppets. Go listen to it right now. Celebrate its anniversary. It deserves your love and attention. That's all from me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on my Instagram link in the description. And I will see you in my other videos. Also, consider becoming a member on my YouTube channel. You can make me do any reviews you would like to see. Same as the Doom MIDI covers. That's it. Bye.